Hi Marwan, hi Rakan. Uh, hi Fadila. So, hello. Uh, so today we've gathered uh, a bunch of questions from our social media followers to you guys. Uh, let's proceed. Okay, okay, so the first question is, tell us more about the expansion of youread.com. What can we expect to change on the platform? Let me go back uh, a little bit in time. Uh, actually, you read started back, I think, to 2017. And the reason you read was built is that we saw so much potential in the market, specifically um, in the industry of writing and translation. A lot of those professionals were prepared to uh, offer extended services to clients, whether they are part of an agency or even working as, as independent uh, contractors. Uh, so when, when the platform started, it started gathering a lot of supply, um, and, but the market was not extremely ready to start working with freelancers yet. Uh, however, in the past two or two and a half years, we saw a trend, um, a growing trend in more and more companies and even startups uh, shifting from the full-time only model to have more of a hybrid uh, model when picking the resources. And that, to be honest, encouraged us uh, to explore more verticals uh, bit by bit. So towards the end of 2019, we had, I guess, around 20,000 freelancers, uh, specifically in writing uh, and translation. We decided to start bit by bit working in the background to, uh, number one, re-architect and rethink about how our marketplace operates. And number two, we started offering those services manually. Our operations team started offering those additional services to clients, whether on things like software engineering or uh, uh, creative and art or video and animation to clients besides what they're already using the marketplace for. And we found a great success um, uh, in this uh, method, but unfortunately we hit uh, a wall because there's so much you can do manually. Uh, so we decided to start investing in tech. We proved uh, that increasing or expanding our um, uh, verticals is going to be extremely helpful in providing our clients with a more rounded experience. Uh, so we rebuilt our platform uh, from the ground up. But we thought that, um, you know, we need uh, a lot of help in terms of gather gathering all the uh, talent uh, that, that our client needs, especially that in this day and age, uh, experience is no longer linear. You need to have an extremely diverse set uh, of skills. Uh, to be the, to be able to deliver on several other projects. So thankfully at that point we were in talks with uh, Nabish um, and we found that Nabish had this. They already been in the market for so long. They're the first marketplace uh, to operate here in the Middle East. And we found common grounds that we had the plans and the enterprise clients that are hungry for, for those talents. And they had all the talents that we were looking for. So it was a perfect um, uh, match at that case. And only a few weeks back, we uh, were ready with our marketplace to start accepting uh, more and more talent uh, to our model. The problem, the challenge that we faced is that the industry of content writing and translation operates from a financial perspective uh, very, very differently from other verticals. So if you ever worked with a writer before or a translator, probably they asked you, uh, how are you willing to pay uh, per word? Uh, so their model is pretty fixated on the outcome rather than the quality or the experience or anything like that. However, like uh, more sophisticated or more value driven uh, services such as design or engineering uh, are usually measured uh, by price per hour or uh, by milestones. So uh, it took a big part of our effort to re-engineer the marketplace in a way to allow those talent, like the, the freelance writers and translators to operate within the same model that they're using. And at the same time, give an opportunity for more value driven services to be priced uh, correctly. And our team actually came up with this brilliant uh, idea to always suggest uh, pricing to freelancers based on their experience. Because we saw that majority of freelancers struggled with pricing, especially if they um, decided to join the freelancing world uh, very, very recently goal here is to offer the same level of service but actually have just one touch point for all your professional needs so a client would come to us they can source anything they're looking for from design uh, to accounting to consulting to software engineering and to translation as well 
Uh, so Marwan, you've spoken about expansion, yes. but of course, when talking about expansion, we have to talk about the context of expansion. And as we all know, we're now the entire world is struggling with COVID-19. So this brings me to my next question, which is how has COVID-19 impacted Yuri.com? Actually, it's impacted us in, in several different ways because no one was expecting something like this. Um, and, and back, I remember back in December and January, we uh, spent a lot of time planning what we we're going to do every single month until the end of the year. Uh, when COVID-19 hit, we found ourselves with a completely different reality. We couldn't still in the beginning grasp or understand how is this going to impact uh, our way of working, our operating model, uh, the way we work with clients. Because, you know, working with clients in the Middle East requires a lot of like physical presence. Last but not least, how we um, are going to manage the team. So uh, let me start with the team. Uh, because when COVID-19 came and we told everyone to stay at home and, uh, you know, work remotely, we had this huge fear that people would be disconnected or, and we had another big fear, which is loss of productivity. But to our surprise, uh, it was the complete opposite. So when we gave this freedom to people uh, to, you know, be basically free agents, uh, operate and work from anywhere they want, uh, we saw a huge uh, bump and increase in productivity. That's number one. Number two, we were no longer uh, tied to any geographic uh, limitation when it comes to finding and hiring talent, which was a great, great uh, performance boost across all functions that we have. And number three, we found that clients are more accepting to working remotely, which, is, which was amazing to some extent, to be honest, because the first thing that came to my mind when I started reading the news about this, that, you know, we have to work from home and we cannot, we're not allowed to meet in person, that a lot of our more traditional clients that require a lot of physical presence, like I said earlier, would back off from their existing project. To our surprise, clients changed perspective overnight. Uh, they started to work much, much faster with us in terms of uh, from project initiation to delivery. They started requiring more access to freelancers because at that point they realized that working with freelancers is the answer to all their current problems because obviously no one is hiring right now. So just to sum it up, uh, for us at Ureed, COVID-19 has been, uh, had to some extent positive impact on uh, productivity, on um, the, the talent we find who would join us full time. And last but not least, uh, our client retention and increase um, in overall scope uh, with those clients. Definitely COVID-19 is not a positive thing. That's not what I'm saying, but I think for a freelancing marketplace, uh, it's basically the perfect moment to validate what we're doing. Um, so we were so lucky to have this opportunity in a way to basically showcase to our clients that we're able to help in those uh, difficult times. Okay, so now the entire company is, is operating remotely. Absolutely. Right. right now, we started actually uh, having one office in Cairo uh, and one office in Dubai. And majority of our team was based in, um, in, in Cairo, actually. But after uh, COVID, we actually started getting a lot of talent uh, from places like Bangalore and India. We started getting people based out of the GCC, but working remotely. We started getting a lot of people based in Europe, even. Um, which was great because I couldn't feel that those people are far away in any way, shape or form. They readjusted their lifestyle and uh, their way of working to remote. Um, so they're more connected. They're more attached to what we're doing. And the shift that we did in cadence as well and the rituals that we do uh, as a company uh, impacted or improved this experience a lot. So right now, we, uh, we are having more regular uh, hands-on meetings. Uh, majority of our managers uh, hold daily stand-up meetings and uh, regular touch points with all of their team members through their jobs. And definitely having more and more advanced things, things like Zoom that we're using right now and Slack um, basically removes any kind of 
lack of, of connection between people. If you would summarize to us, um, what have you learned from your company's experience overall working remotely these past few months? Good question. Um, the first thing that I learned, I think I mentioned it uh, a little bit before, that you actually need to place a lot of trust in your team uh, rather than uh, you know, having to manage them really, really closely. Because um, you need to understand that we're all adults here, right? So we're not trying to tell you what to do. This will be basically counterproductive. So giving more direction than um, input on people's work has proven to be far more effective in um, uh, driving people uh, to do more, right? The second thing would be uh, that things like, you know, the things that we learn in textbook, like, you know, planning, you need to plan ahead and you need to make sure that you have a strict schedule on what you should deliver. Those kinds of things, you know, they, 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 prove, they were proven to be not super effective uh, in those times because that's the biggest uncertainty that happened in my career so far, COVID-19. I've never witnessed anything like this before. And it taught me a lesson that, yes, planning is important and planning is uh, absolutely effective in some cases, but you need to be extremely agile in a way to be able to readjust course, right? But because all of the great people that I work with that you read, um, I keep getting a lot of advice from everyone in the company, whether they're very, very senior, or very, very junior, on how to adjust this course because all the response that I've seen from COVID-19 so far was highly experimental. So being a startup and having this more flexible um, kind of approach to planning allowed us to experiment with uh, many, many different uh, scenarios and things and functions. And at the end of the day, if you looked at our numbers, it would show that we're actually, those experiments were the reason why we got to where we wanted to be. All right. Uh, okay. And uh, while we're still at it, we're still discussing the pandemic and its effects on freelance marketplaces uh, like you read. I'd like to move mm -hmm. to discuss a bit um, the expansion, but from a, a logistical standpoint. How have you managed the logistics of expansion and growth amid the pandemic when your entire company is remote and the economy is still unstable? Okay. Um, I remember back in October of last year, uh, as Marwan mentioned, the amount of planning that we've done, making sure that we have a schedule on weekly basis, on monthly basis, and this is the, the plan for progression, and this is what we need to hire. Um, and then we made a decision around November that um, we're going to set up shop in Egypt. Um, and then I moved there, uh, relocated to Cairo. Uh, we set up shop, we opened up the office, we started our first hires. Um, and then um, fast forward to about March or so, um, like the pandemic really affected everyone and it, uh, it was too fast, like it happened very quickly. Too. So logistically, um, we are blessed, honestly, uh, um, at Yurid that we had a team that was flexible, a team that was uh, um, really motivated, had a really, really great work ethic. Um, that we're able to adapt to this change very quickly. Uh, the fact that you no longer have to come to an office, that you have to use everything that is digital. Um, and again, we're also lucky that we live in an age and time that we have all those tools at our disposal. Uh, so we were able to adapt much quicker. Uh, we also had to adapt the team to a structure where they don't really burn out uh, because at uh, working from home, uh, without you realizing, you sometimes do 14, 15 hours because if your laptop is there in your lap, uh, regardless where you are, uh, um, you overwork yourself constantly. Um, and the fact that you don't actually go out, uh, you don't leave a physical space, a physical office, um, you are constantly connected. Uh, so we had to also uh, think of ways, and the team, as Marwan mentioned, uh, proposed new ways um, as little as setting up a small uh, workstation at your home, um, advice that we have to give to the team and adapting to it. Um, and um, as Marwan mentioned, the fact that the pandemic happened, we are now able to access a global talent pool. 
uh, like the main reason of moving to Egypt was the abundance of talent and the availability of it. Um, so long story short, we're, um, we've been blessed uh, by a great team um, and uh, things worked in our advantage. And uh, yeah, so it's not easy, but it was done. That's great, that's great. Okay, um, my next question is a bit uh, more generic and uh, both of you are free to give us your insights about it. Uh, what do you think is the importance of the role that freelance marketplaces like Yuri.com play in the larger freelance economy? I think it will all boil back to regulation. So not regulation as in the, the law regulation sense, but uh, more organizing to their experience because I've worked as a freelancer at some point in my career and I can tell you it's quite difficult uh, to work with clients. Uh, I've seen two scenarios in this case, some freelancers that uh, work in, again, value-based uh, work or value-based delivery, things like design or software. They try now to position themselves as a company. And I saw this many, many times. And the reason they do that is to basically tell the client to take them more seriously. And rightfully so, because um, many of the freelancers that I've spoken to, and I've spoken to hundreds of them, they struggle with um, things like collection, like payments, uh, like proving that the work was delivered, uh, and all of those things. So there is no like more formal mechanism uh, to work with freelancers. And marketplaces does two things for them. Number one, it allows them to present their background experience and uh, you know, capabilities in a very fair way. So I don't have to uh, judge people primarily based on the price point or based on uh, you know, their portfolios. Marketplaces offer them this opportunity to be um, basically uh, their, their experience measured based on multiple or several uh, factors like the reviews that, that other clients left them, the amount of money they were able to generate uh, through working with different clients, uh, their professional and non-professional experience, the tests or certificates or the validation that they got from this marketplace. Two, uh, payments. Payments is a big pain for any freelancer because you're basically working with a company that is not accustomed uh, to paying people out. Right, so basically marketplaces solve this issue by being the man in the middle, uh, by offering um, more safety for this freelancer to guarantee that they're getting uh, paid on time. And it's the final judge if the work that is being delivered from the freelancer was not up to par with the client expectation or what was agreed upon. And it guarantees as well for the freelancers that if they deliver, they're going to get, um, you know, um, the, the money that is based on the contract that they have. Uh, so, so basically, we solve a lot of problems for, for the freelancer, but at the same time, give the clients access to all of those freelancers. So I have personally seen many people, when they're looking for a freelancer, they would go to many different social media networks and try to find people through personal connections. This can be painful because uh, it's a black box. You, every person that sends you a message, you need to look at their profile, you need to go through uh, their portfolios, you need to call them, you need to do all of this, right? So the freelancing marketplace basically shortens uh, this timeline substantially. So instead of waiting for a couple of more days to um, find this person that you're looking for or the talent that you're looking for, hire them and leave them on the project and pay them, um, it will be replaced with like very few minutes of search. Uh, payment uh, is done instantly. You can generate the receipt or an invoice. Uh, you can chat with them. You can have a video call with them. So there are many several ways that we save time, right? So on the client side, we save them a lot of time and we basically guarantee them that they're going to have a positive experience. And on the freelancer side, we definitely save them time as well. But the most important component is trust and safety, right? So we ensure that they're going to be presented fairly and they will be compensated fairly as well uh, to, uh, to their work. So just to summarize this, it all boils down again to regulation. You regulate the relationship 
between uh, a customer and a service provider. So speaking yes, yes. of that, when should businesses opt for Yurid Enterprise rather than use Yurid.com's regular services? Can we be uh, yeah. a better judge for this question? Yeah, yeah. brilliant question. Um, we, we have a lot of clients that come to us and, and normally um, it's, it's due to them going to agencies and facing a lot of complications. They make things quite difficult for them to understand and grasp. Um, so with our service with enterprise is uh, we simplify things uh, we make their lives much easier um, in the sense where we break down to a project into components into what kind of talent they need to achieve what they'd like to uh, uh, pay for um, with a very clear timeline and as Marwan mentioned our model now has changed to uh, paying per hour uh, so what we do is we uh, do a briefing call with the client, understand exactly what they want, uh, and then determine if it's going to be a, a, a large team uh, uh, with different skill sets, then enterprise is a more suitable solution for them. Um, and then uh, the success manager, uh, after they've done the briefing call, uh, does a scoping uh, uh, internally to check the talent pool. Uh, who is available, uh, who uh, falls within the rate, uh, the experience level, uh, has the background. Um, and, and again, we present that to the client for them to make a final decision on the, the actual team that they'd like to uh, go for. Um, and then what happens is, uh, as Marwan mentioned, we help in regulating the relationship through the platform itself. Uh, we facilitate easier payments uh, for freelancers uh, um, uh, and easier communication all throughout the project. Uh, we can even provide them with a project manager on a freelance basis that can handle the project with uh, a technical background and industry knowledge uh, um, that they can uh, be coupled with the team uh, so it can become an extension uh, of their company basically for that duration. So this is when people uh, opt for enterprise. Uh, for B2C, they normally go there for uh, a quick job that requires a few hours rather than days or weeks or months. My next question is, what makes Yurid.com different from other freelance marketplaces? Good question, Fadila, because I got asked this question many, many times. So there are several things that we do differently than, than other marketplaces. Uh, the first thing being that, you know, the, the Middle East is not, again, like I said, accustomed to freelance marketplaces. If you look at the, the total addressable market or the size of the market here, it's not uh, really as big or um, as big in terms of percentage uh, from the total economy versus other more developed markets, or not, let's not say more developed or more uh, mature when it comes to freelancing, right? Like uh, Europe, even Southeast Asia is more accustomed to freelancing than, than here in the Middle East. So what we do is that we're investing a lot in creating this culture of uh, freelancing, right? So we are working hand in hand with government entities, with e-commerce platforms, with startups and, and all sorts of companies and all types of companies uh, in order to allow them to work with those freelancers better. So our team is investing time and technology that is designed and built for the Middle East. We're not, um, we're not copying someone else. We're not trying to replicate what others did and were successful at, we are trying to build something that will work really, really well in the Middle East. That's the first thing. The second thing is definitely hyper-localization. Uh, right now, we're looking into things like payments. How can we create and strike a lot of partnerships across all the countries in the Middle East that we work with and allow those freelancers to get seamless payment experience? Because at the end of the day, they want to uh, get a payout as quickly as possible. So we're actually investing time and effort and uh, uh, like monetary investment in making sure that this can happen in our biggest markets like Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE, for example. Um, the last but not least, we're the only Arabic marketplace. So there isn't any uh, one of the global, I know there are a couple of more in, in the Middle East, but there isn't any, the global marketplaces are not really taking the Middle East seriously. And we're doing that. We're doing that really well. And uh, clients are happy to work with us uh, because of that, because we're able to provide uh, talent from different places uh, across the Middle East. We're trying to uh, basically overcome this geographic challenge 
but at the same time fit within the criteria they're looking for. Um, and last but not least, we're trying to give an opportunity to freelancers work with clients um, from whatever they want. So if you live in Egypt and you want to work with more clients in Saudi Arabia or the other way around, if you're living with Saudi, in Saudi and you want to work with clients, let's say in Jordan, Lebanon, or even the US, you'll be able to do so on our marketplaces. Most of the other marketplaces, majority of their enterprise business is designed around geographical limitations. So if you look at the top, let's say one or two marketplaces, all of their enterprise clients never go outside of the US or Europe, right? So we are bringing those enterprise opportunities to freelancers. So if you wish to work with the biggest e-commerce player in the world, you'll be able to do so on, on your e. You don't have to uh, create an account in the US and move to the US to be able to do that, right? Um, so those are a few things that we're doing. And, and I think the most important differentiator that makes us different is that we listen to our people, right? We listen to the freelancers and we listen to the customers who are based in the Middle East. And we're constantly improving and, and investing in our marketplace in a way to make it fit for this particular profile. We're not trying to compete with the global players. We're actually building something completely new uh, for, um, uh, for the Middle East. And, and this takes me to my next point, which is our grand vision, because we're not just aiming to create just a, a platform or a website that allows you to work with freelancers. We want this to become a platform for work generally. So if you're a company, you can at some point next year, you'll be able to use our platform to plan for projects, right? You'll be able to bring your own talent. You'll be able to uh, get people to upload their timesheets and track their progress and performance. You'll be able to conversate and chat with people uh, and share documents and all of that. So. It's not only a freelancing marketplace. We're calling it that because it's a good point of reference. What we're aiming for is to build a, a more comprehensive, more rounded uh, platform that would allow companies to operate better. So if you're a startup CEO or someone who just started a business, you can build a team, you can work with them, you can manage projects, you can pay them, and all of that within our marketplace.